welcome to our weekly community self-practice Sunday check-in session, a half hour of Dharma, reflection, and community connections. If you are a new member of our community, please accept our wholehearted welcome to you. And if you are a regular, so welcome back. It is customary in Australia to begin any meetings by acknowledging the traditional owners of our land. So in the spirit of reconciliation, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which we walk, study, and reside, the Wodi Wodi people of the Darwo Nation, and pay my respects to the elders past, present, and emerging. I also pay my respects to the traditional custodians of the various lines on which you all are. So the check-in session has been developed by our communities of practice team and the entire community. This session aimed to develop a reflective practice in response to changes. Guided by humanistic Buddhism, we'd like to cultivate our practices and build memorable friendships. Last week, our old friend Bruce shared his turning point story, a 40 years, a 40 years journey from me to we. So this week, we welcome uh, another old friend, Chris, to share his turning point story with us, the Dharma well of life. Welcome, Chris. Thank you, Xiaoman. Um, good to see everyone here. Yeah, so uh, my my turning point story today is called the Dharma Wheel of Life. And as you're going to see, I've, I've committed that to a, a song as well as a few images. So, um, But before we start, let's do our check-in. So get yourself in a, a comfortable position and gently close your eyes. Let your shoulders drop. Relax your muscles in your face. As you breathe in, feel the breath go down to your abdomen. Let's the abdomen rise and then fall. Keep your attention on your breath and the abdomen rising and falling. Just slowly open your eyes now. Come back to the present. Take a big breath and just breathe out. Okay. Okay, I hope you're a little bit more centred after that. Okay, just coming back. I'm coming back to the computer slide. The emoji there. Okay, next slide. Thanks, Yaman. So my story today um, starts or, uh, back in 2009 when with a, within a very short period of time, uh, two of my closest friends and my father passed away. And around about that time, I was um, I had to attend a meeting in Seoul at a place called the COEX, which is like a big convention centre. And it's in Gangnam. And you may know, you know Gangnam from the, the, the uh, song a couple of years ago, but it's a very populated part of Seoul. But across from Seoul, there's a little temple and a very old temple, as I was to find out. So I thought I'd go across and walk and have a look around the temple. And little did I know that I'd walked in what's called as a temple stay. And that's a, they can be anywhere from a day to I imagine a couple of weeks where um, you as an individual or you may be part of a bigger group. Um, you spend a day focusing on several activities, including meditation. Uh, making a lotus out of uh, paper and a short Dharma talk. Um, and at that time, I was introduced to um, many of the concepts of Buddhism as well. So next slide. So here you can see the temple itself. Um, you can see to the right a, a big uh, building. Um, and it's a very old temple, as you can see there. 
It's called Bong Unsa. And this was when I revisited it. I took a picture and you can see my wife walking up on the side there, Louise. So I've been back two or three times since then. Uh, next slide. And one of the highlights of the, um, the Buddhist grounds is the big uh, Maitreya uh, statue here. And it's one of the tallest in the country. Uh, next slide. And this was where I actually walked into the temple stay. Um, I was wandering up this path. And if you look through that uh, gate gateway there, you'll see a little entry um, with a, a veranda over it in the background, just behind the lady. And this was where um, one of the, uh, the Buddhist um, coordinators for the event uh, beckoned me, come on in, come on in. And I didn't know what I was walking into, uh, but I went and uh, undertook the activities and they didn't charge me anything. And I just, they didn't have enough people. So it was great to be able to, um, uh, you know, to take part and, and be involved. Uh, next slide. So this is kind of like part two. Uh, so another aspect of my turning point story uh, involves my wife, Louise, who you saw walking there. Um, and she was doing community Tai Chi down in a suburb called Eastwood. And one of our other community of uh, uh, practice members, Stacey, was also doing it with us. And she approached Louise and said, would you be interested in doing some uh, volunteer work for the Buddha's birthday event at the Nantian Temple? And we both talked about it and we said, well, why not? So we both went down and that's where we met uh, Venerable Zhe Wei for the first time. And we were introduced to the Buddha's birthday education project, project um, which was a great, uh, great time for us at that time at that uh, point in time we learned a lot about it um and we attended it i'm not too sure we've got venerable Zhiwei here for how many years it ran face to face um uh, and we that involved you know numerous visits down the temple and learning about the, the fo guan shan temple and uh, venerable master sing yun um and that culminated in 2018 when both louise and i took the triple gem and the five precepts down at the temple and unfortunately, we were planned to go to the Fo Guan Shan um, temple in Taiwan, but it was cancelled. It was just at the, the start of COVID. Um, so unfortunately, we didn't get to go there, but um, it's still on the agenda. I've still got the airfares there with Cafe. So hopefully I'll be able to go in the future. Uh, next slide. So what I'd like to do is, oh, you've got on the slide there. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> Sorry about that. That should be my head. But anyway, um, so what I'd like to do is play you a little song. Um, I'm a musician uh, since I was very young, seven. Um, so this is a song I wrote about the time and it, it uh, picks up on several events. So it's called the Dharma Wheel of Life. Well, those doubts were building up slowly. I guess it's just my stage of life. Turning 60 was kind of holy Those waking up rumors were life Those summer years are behind me now Those seasons in the sun with you Journeys along the northern line Searching for harmony that's true Emptiness in the morning Stillness in the afternoon My close friends have departed I guess I'll be with them too soon It started out so nice You and me in paradise But the dark clouds are now gathering And I'm looking for some sort of advice But oh you see it was always meant to be the dharma wheel of life holds the key well those temples in kyoto had me reeling in ecstasy left my heart there beating I was hoping you wouldn't see Those autumn leaves turn slowly The wind howls at my back door Those 1950s children are lonely The rich turn out to be poor Spooky action 
run at a distance Entanglement faster than light I extinguished my resistance Meditation was such a delight But those blues come back to haunt me It doesn't seem quite right The human condition they tell me But I won't give up without a fight But oh, can't you see It was always meant to be The dumber wheel of life holds the key But oh, can't you see It was always meant to be The dumber wheel of life holds the key So that's the first time I've played that publicly, so... Anyway, uh, so I've been lucky enough to have a couple of trips to Tibet too. I went uh, just before COVID in 2019 and 2017. And I've just got a few images here. The first is of when you go to any Buddhist temple in Tibet, they'll always have the, the prayer wheel up there or the Dharma wheel with the, um, the two deer. It's always a striking feature of many of the, the temples there. And um, while I was walking around, uh, next slide, thanks Yao Ming. Uh, the, the main temple in, in Lhasa called um, Jokhan Temple, um, I bought a, a picture and it hangs up in my lounge room at the moment. And it's actually the Tibetan Wheel of Life too. So I think it's a good, a good image. There's lots of symbolism in that as well. So a good image to finish up with. So uh, yes, yeah, thank you for giving me the opportunity to talk a little bit about my, my, uh, my turning point story. So I've got a couple of questions for you. Uh, to reflect on. Um, what is your key to life that sustains you? Uh, what are the key elements that influence your decision to grasp the key? And I've, I've outlined some of those that uh, affected me at the time. And were there any other factors outside your own thinking, other external events that influence your, your situation at the time? Um, and that last bit of the song about the, uh, the entanglement, um, you know, where... Uh, we're constantly in a, embedded in a situation that's uh, risen from all the different uh, decisions and actions b before us. Um, and it's a, it's a good, good thing to think about um, when you're in a good and a bad place in life. So thank you. Well, thank you, Chris, for sharing with us your experience in Korea and also with the beautiful song. I do love the lyrics. And thank you everyone for your listening. And now we are invited to contemplate and, and discuss the questions showing on the screen that Chris just introduced and read to us. So in the next 15 minutes during the breakout room discussion. So now we will be placed into groups of three to four to share and discuss. In the discussion, we recommend you spending some time getting to know each other and uh, then discussing the questions. There will be Zoom notifications to guide you, but feel free to let the flow of your discussions guide you. Our sessions are guided by Meta, which is unconditional love and kindness for all sentient beings. Let's use this breakout room discussion to express and receive loving kindness to and from one another and take time to pause, share and listen. We'll also ask you to share some of your findings with the larger group at the end of the breakout room discussion. So now let's go to our breakout rooms for rich and nourishing discussions. See you all back in 15 minutes. So welcome back everyone. <laughs> I hope you all have a great discussion in the breakout rooms. And please feel free to tap some of your reflections in the chat box and Chris will lead the flow. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Xiao Meng. Yeah, we had an interesting discussion in our group. Um, uh, one of them focused around interfaith because uh, um, several of our participants in our group, um, you know, had uh, religious faith associated with uh, with uh, Christianity, for example. Um, and we also talked a little bit about karma too. 
Um, we raise the issue that, you know, uh, you're responsible for your actions in some way. Um, but I also raise the question is, but it's, is it just you or is it other people impacting in on that karma too? It's a lot more complex and entangled than um, just you as an individual. So those were our initial thoughts from our group. I think Liam tapped some of his reflections in the chat box. Mm-hmm. He says, Sangha, not just a religious group, but the realization of our interconnectedness as a worldwide society that can live in a mutually beneficial way to look after ourselves as a whole. Thank you. And Priscilla said here, it took years of failures, interactions, forgiveness to move from my believing in my interdep- independence and to realize the very simplicity of interconnectedness. Thank you, Priscilla. And uh, we've also got here, um, I'm wondering if that's Joey, because I know he likes uh, acronyms, P-O-D, Perseverance, Optimism and Diligence. Yeah, thank you for everyone's reflection. So uh, thank you, Chris, for your sharing and thank you everyone for your listening. And we really hope the check-in session was helpful to you. And we hope you experienced the unconditional love and compassion of this community. But for anyone who might be experiencing a greater need than what today could meet, please don't hesitate to get in touch with us. And you can also reach out to the professional organizations on the screen. So we will have a one and a half day online mindfulness retreat conducted during uh, 12th and 13th of November. And uh, please feel free to register if you are interested in this activity. So for the next Sunday, our old friend Joy will share his turning point stories, something related to vows with us. As we check out today, let's keep in our heart and mind and recite the dedication of marriage together. Let us now dedicate the goodness of what you have done to all living beings. May kindness, compassion, joy, and equanimity pervade all worlds. May we cherish and build affinities to benefit all beings. May Chan, Pure Land, and Precepts inspire equality and patience. May our gratitude and humility give rise to great vows. Okay, thank you, Chris, for your generous sharing. Thank you, Lai Ching, for being our IT today. And thank you, everyone, for joining us. Now we will end the recording and have our Euro plenary session. So please stay around if you have time. Otherwise, see you all again next Sunday at 11 a.m.